Now at 5.30 here on WKYT this morning, a man's murder charge could get thrown out by a Scott County judge today. The reason why, just ahead. Also on WKYT this morning, Georgetown College is mourning the loss of one of their own. But a more on the tragedy on campus early in the new year coming up. And Florida investigators have released their final report on the Disney alligator attack that killed a two-year-old boy. That and your weather forecast just ahead on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky Morning Start here on WKYT. Good morning to you. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. Thank you so much for joining us. And let me tell you, we've got a beautiful day ahead of us. It's nice to start your mornings knowing you have something right. to look forward to. And when we had a beautiful day yesterday, you know, we are know. on a roll around here. And let's, uh, let's try to continue that uh, here a little while. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, typically this time of year, really as you get toward mid and late August, you start to see the temperatures dive just just a bit. We've had that the past couple of afternoons. We're going to do it again today as temperatures will be below average. We're there in the 50s and 60s again this morning. Very nice start. No problems for you walking out the door, heading out to the car, and taking off to work early this morning. We're getting the kids ready, that is, too. Going in toward the afternoon, it's 84. I know that's slightly warmer than yesterday, but the humidity is still low, and that's going to help us out big time today. Now, that will change, so it's one of those times you just better take advantage of because as we head towards your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it'll be pretty sticky once again, and that could lead to some storms. I'll show you when you can expect those coming up. Okay, we'll see you shortly, Mike. In the news this morning, the Georgetown College campus is mourning the loss of one of their own. 18 year old football player Colson Mocklet died after falling at the Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity house over the weekend. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live with more on how the community is coping with the loss. Hillary? Well, Tiger Pride is a saying used by students here at Georgetown College. That saying now meaning more than ever as they rally around each other, especially their football team as they're dealing with the loss of one of their own. Colson Mocklet was a sophomore defensive lineman for the Tigers. Mocklet suffered serious injuries after police say he attempted to jump from a third-story stairwell to a second-story landing when he fell and hit his head. Georgetown police say they do suspect alcohol played a role, but do believe what happened inside the Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity house was an accident. Head football coach Bill Cronin says it has been a tough time for his team. He's been here long enough for everybody to, to learn how to love him. And um, uh, just a tremendous uh, loss. In the chapel for students and staff this evening, just a very difficult time for a place that I know is a very tight knit campus that will rally around each other as they deal with this loss. We're now live in Georgetown, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Very di difficult uh, time, Absolutely. you know, and uh, for those uh, students over there as they're just getting a school starting for the year. 533 right now. A Lexington man accused of breaking into a woman's home and raping her is going to be heading to court this morning. Police arrested Jeffrey Cummins last night, and he now faces a long list of charges. WKYT's Mike Byer is live with the details on the case. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Andrea. We picked up Jeffrey Cummins' arrest citation overnight. It goes into a lot of detail about the violent crimes he's accused of committing. The most recent crime was just two days ago. Police say early Sunday, Cummins used a crowbar to break into a 78 year old woman's home where he raped her. According to his arrest citation, Cummins then poured bleach on the victim as a way to try and destroy evidence. Police tell us a neighbor later found the elderly woman who had several injuries. Now digging through court documents, we've learned there was a warrant out for Cummins' arrest following a similar crime last year. In that case, police say he got into the victim's home through a window and raped her at knife point. Police say the victim told them that Cummins said he would kill her if she tried to get away from him. Cummins is now facing more than a dozen charges, including rape, sodomy, and burglary. He'll answer to those charges when he's arraigned today here at Fayette County District Court. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you very much. This morning, a judge will decide whether a murder charge against a man accused of killing a Scott County woman should be thrown out. Police say Nicholas Willinger killed Sue Jones at her home in 2010. The retired school bus teacher, school bus driver, excuse me, was beaten to death. Willinger is charged with murder, robbery, and burglary. But his attorneys say some of the evidence in the case is now missing. They claim a retired detective misplaced two large notebooks of files. They're asking for Willinger's charges to be dropped. 
And a man accused of killing a two-year-old boy is expected to enter a guilty plea today in Rowan Circuit Court. Brian Gallagher is accused of murder and criminal abuse in connection to the 2009 death of Nathaniel Jones. Police say the two-year-old died as a result of injuries to his stomach. Gallagher was indicted with Nathaniel's mother, Tia Jones, back in 2010. Last week, Jones entered an Alford plea to two charges of second-degree criminal abuse. The Alford plea means Jones agrees there is enough evidence to convict her, but does not admit to wrongdoing. We're coming up on 536 now on WKYT and new on WKYT this morning. A Pulaski County man was arrested just hours after getting out of jail. Police say Jonathan Whitaker broke into a home in Somerset over the weekend, hours before he was released from jail on a criminal trespassing charge. He's now back behind bars this morning on new charges, including burglary. Also new on WKYT this morning, Florida investigators have released their final report on the Disney alligator attack that killed a two-year-old boy. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission says little could be done to prevent what happened. The report says the gator acted in, quote, predatory manner, and the boy did nothing to provoke the reptile. The report also says a man alerted staff to gators about 45 minutes prior to the attack. Trappers have killed six gators capable of the attack and are confident the deadly gator was one of them. Disney has since added additional measures to secure the beach. Donald Trump heads to Texas today to fundraise and rally supporters while the controversy over Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server during her time as Secretary of State continues to loom over her campaign. Brian Webb has the latest on the presidential campaign. Appearing on Jimmy Kimmel last night, Hillary Clinton talked about getting ready to debate her Republican opponent. I am drawing on my experience in elementary school. <laughs> Before addressing the latest chapter in her enduring email saga. We've already released, I don't know, 30,000 plus, so what's a few more? On Monday, a federal judge ordered the State Department to quickly release close to 15,000 previously undisclosed emails and documents recovered from her private email server by the FBI during their criminal investigation. Clinton campaign aides say they aren't sure what's in the documents, but support all her work-related emails being released. At a campaign event in Ohio, Donald Trump sought to keep the limelight on Clinton's family foundation amid mounting claims its foreign donors got preferential treatment at the State Department during her tenure. The favor is done, and the significant number of times it was done require an expedited investigation by a special prosecutor immediately, immediately, immediately. The Republican nominee also made a pitch to minority voters. What do you have to lose? I will straighten it out. We'll get rid of the crime. You'll be able to walk down the street without getting shot. A new Monmouth University poll finds Clinton leading Trump among black, Hispanic, and Asian voters 72 to 10 percent. Brian Webb for CBS News. Hillary Clinton continues her West Coast fundraising tour with four private events today in California. A Franklin County judge says Governor Matt Bevan cannot remove the chairman of the Kentucky Retirement Systems Board, at least for now. The judge says the governor should not have removed Thomas Elliott as board chairman or threatened him with arrest if he attended meetings. But the judge will allow the governor to keep the new board he formed as long as Elliott is a part of it. The judge's order is a temporary ruling until there is a final one, and that could take some months. Attorney General Andy Bashir had filed a lawsuit claiming the governor had overstepped his authority. In a statement, the governor's office said, quote, we are confident that the Court of Appeals will reaffirm that Mr. Elliott is not a member of the new KRS board. Attorney General Andy Bashir said the judge, quote, recognized the important and legitimate questions my office has raised about the governor's authority to reorganize the KRS. Board. Fayette County school leaders say that Superintendent Manny Calk aced his first evaluation. They say the school board gave him either accomplished or excellent ratings across the board. The board cited his achievements in community outreach, leadership development, and focusing on student needs. Calk has just started his second school year with Fayette County Schools. The school board has also approved starting the next school year earlier 
Next year it'll start on August 16th. A new school year is now underway across most of Kentucky. Many school districts are dealing with a shortage in one important position. The director of transportation for Fayette County Public Schools says he is short 18 school bus drivers. He says for now they're doubling up some routes and using other personnel who are licensed and trained to drive. The same problems exist in Madison and Scott counties. Directors say they're accepting applications. Once those are received, it takes about three weeks, maybe up to four weeks, to have the prospective driver trained and licensed. And we have an update for you on the construction of the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. Last week, we told you that some equipment was removed from the site. Developer Dudley Webb told the Herald Leader that's because subcontractors finished their work on the exterior walls of the underground parking garage. He says another group of subcontractors will soon arrive to begin the vertical construction of the garage. Webb says the garage should be finished in about seven months. Anxiously waiting to see how that turns out. Right, and out. once uh, that equipment was pulled out, there were a lot of questions mm -hmm. raised, and so now he says, you know, giving that explanation. We'll right. see how it all goes. Yeah. All right. Now, this is an interesting <laughs> story. KFC has a new marketing gimmick, and it's one I don't know if I'm willing to try. Well, we'll see. KFC <laughs> gave away 3,000 bottles of sunscreen that they say smells like fried chicken. Uh huh. <laughs> it's to get people talking about its new extra crispy chicken. And maybe by keeping people from getting a crispy out in the sun. KFC says it was out of the bottles just a few hours after they were put up on their website. It seems like such a contradiction. <laughs> You're trying to keep your son from frying and you smell like fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How attractive, you Sanchez know? is strong, though. <laughs> you'll, maybe you'll get that urge for some uh, fried chicken. Yeah, exactly. wonder how that uh, how it really Who smells. Who came up with that? How close it is right. to actual fried chicken. <laughs> okay, see, this is why it works. You get interested in <laughs> there it. There you go. 542 is our time this morning. Let's check traffic and see what's going on as we take a look right now at the region. Here's a look at the traffic map and the look at the Fayette Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam at Manowar and Todd's Road. Things are looking pretty clear right now, which is always nice to see early in the morning. I'm sure those will start picking up here yeah. shortly. Interstates were running fine. As, as you can see there, it uh, looks good at uh, Manowar and Todd's. And at other locations, reports are that everything is good right now. Still a lot more news coming up for you Tuesday morning on WKYT. As you rise and shine, come to get ready to go. Absolutely. <laughs> what does your Instagram account say about you? Turns out a lot more than you may think. That's ahead when we come back on WKYT this morning. Stay with us. Yeah, things look pretty good outside early this morning. We'll start to see that humidity increase, not so much today, but the next few days, and that will lead to those rain chances. If you have any thunderstorms that could cause some problems, I'll have that in your forecast coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're 58 degrees right now in Laurel County. Good morning to you guys. East Burns, Statlin, and Corbin, all the way down to Whitley County. You're sitting there in Williamsburg, Saxton. Things are looking just fine across 75. Temperatures are right there in the 50s and 60s. Frankfurt up toward Peaks Mill, Stamping Ground, Georgetown, Sadieville. Uh, it looks pretty good in, in you guys' region, too. But there is a little bit of fog, a hint of fog down south. So you just got to keep that in mind as you're traveling early this morning. Other than that, there is nothing to worry about. 75 degrees there by 11 a.m. Teachers, this graphic is just for you and only for you. Playground forecast 75 degrees at 11 a.m. Keep the kids outside as long as possible. This is another good looking day and another nice feeling day, too. And we just don't have that many here in summer around here. We just don't. And so you got to take advantage of it. We'll have it again today. I see no problems whatsoever later on this afternoon either for the kids coming home from school. Now we go off into your Wednesday. Wednesday, there is a slight chance of rain. We cannot rule it out. And you can see that heading in towards your afternoon. Here's 3 p.m. You see little blips here and there, and that's about it. But as we travel off into the evening hours, maybe a couple of more blips. So there's not a great chance, but there is a chance of rain there on, on Wednesday. The better opportunity actually comes on Thursday. Watch this as we go hour by hour. I'll take you into it. During the morning hours, we start off right around 60 to 65 degrees. Later on that afternoon, we're talking about mid to maybe even some upper 80s with storms around us. Now, they'll be very hit and miss. I don't see many of us getting rain, but there is that opportunity to pick that up. If you have any pictures from yesterday or anything going on this morning, any questions you have for me, just tweet it at me. Check this picture out that was tweeted at me yesterday. It's from Kathy7. Horses enjoy today's weather, too. How cool is that shot right there? You can find that on Twitter, Micah Harris WX. 
I'd love to show off some pictures for you. Okay, let's talk about your seven day forecast. Today and tomorrow look pretty good. Thursday's your best chance of rain, guys. And it doesn't look that bad for the weekend. There are slight chances of rain for the weekend, but it's going to be humid once again. I know we get these shots of mm -hmm. nice weather, but you got to remember we're still in summer for an, at least another month. So it's going to take some time. That's all right. It we'll, happens. We'll get there. We got a taste these. of fall. <laughs> right. I like these little shots. Well, They're this is right. kind of fun because you sort of get both, you know, mm -hmm. for right. a little while here. Absolutely. You know, a little summer, a little there fall. You, you know, something for everyone. Yeah, it works out. All right. Thank you, Mike. It's uh, 5:48 right now. Psychologists have a new tool to predict your mental health. That new tool is called Instagram. <laughs> you may have heard of it, right? Right. Uh, studies suggest that your Instagram pictures can possibly tell if you're depressed. Researchers looked at nearly 44,000 Instagram pictures from volunteers. Some of those volunteers had a history of depression. They found that people who are depressed posted pictures that were less bright and not as saturated with color. In other words, pictures that were bluer, grayer, and darker. Darker. And people who were depressed were also found to post more frequently, apply more filters, and be more likely to include faces. Researchers say they want to explore new avenues for screening for mental illness. Well, that's an interesting uh, application. That isn't really it? is yeah. interesting, yeah. especially the blue. You think of being yeah. blue and it's depressing. Yeah. Huh. So hopefully, maybe you could uh, take some nice pictures and brighten up your mood. Brighten you up know? your mood. Maybe it would work go. that way. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news at this hour. We'll take a look at traffic this morning, see how things are picking up out there. We'll update you, of course, on weather, and we also have some health news. And it's so good to have you with us on WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome back in. It's great to have you with us here bright and early on WKYT. Our time is 5.53 right now. We're moving right along yeah. this morning, Tuesday. aren't we? Tuesday, yeah. August 23rd. You've made it this far, Andrea. I know. <laughs> I came back for a second day. All right. You're in it for the long haul now. <laughs> now let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on at this hour. The Georgetown College campus is mourning the death of a football player. Police say 18-year-old Colson Mocklet died yesterday after falling at the Lambakai Alpha Fraternity House over over the weekend. They say Mocklet was trying to jump from a third story stairway uh, to a second floor landing when he fell. Police are investigating if alcohol is involved. This morning, a judge will decide whether a murder charge against a man accused of killing a Scott County woman should be thrown out. Police say Nicholas Willinger killed Sue Jones at her home in 2010. He is charged with murder, robbery, and burglary. But his attorneys say some of the evidence in the case has disappeared, so they're asking for Willinger's charges to be dropped. In national news, President Obama travels to Louisiana today to survey the damage left behind by devastating floods. The president has been criticized by some Republicans for not cutting his family vacation short and touring the state. The White House maintains that President Obama's response to the tragedy has proven far more effective than the immediate response to Hurricane Katrina. And sticking to politics, the controversy over Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server during her time as Secretary of State continues to escalate. Yesterday, a federal judge pressed the State Department to quickly review and release nearly 15,000 previously undisclosed emails recovered from the server by the FBI. Meantime, Donald Trump is calling for a special prosecutor to investigate the Democratic nominee amid claims foreign donors to the Clinton Foundation got preferential treatment at the State Department during her tenure. And making today's top health headlines, the American Heart Association is recommending that children eat or drink less than 25 grams of added sugars every day. It'd be quite a restriction, mm -hmm. and that's just about six teaspoons. The recommendation is the same for children ages 2 through 18. Eating too much added sugar in childhood is linked to an increased risk of obesity and a higher blood pressure. Young football players may have a higher risk of head injuries while taking part in practice drills versus playing in games. That's the findings of researchers at Virginia Tech who followed the football seasons of 34 players ages 9 to 11. They found 70% of high magnitude head impacts occurred during practice sessions. The researchers recommend that coaches reduce the time spent on tackling and blocking drills to lessen the chances of those head injuries. They do a lot of uh, research on that over mm -hmm. at uh, Virginia Tech, by the way. Yeah, it's yeah. important to think about. Yeah, the time now is 5:55. Let's get a check this hour on today's traffic trouble. Spots with live drive traffic. We'll take a look right now at the current travel times into Lexington, and they're about normal. It looks like a good ride's in. Uh, there is a little bit of a patchy fog here and there this morning. You might encounter that if you're crossing the Clays Ferry Bridge this morning. 
And here's a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam at Manowar and Todd's Road. Everything looks to be running very <laughs> smoothly, which is always nice to see. So, uh, good start to your yeah. Tuesday morning. The rush is on, as you can see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be picking up here uh, shortly, though. And of course, that's uh, nearby the, the uh, Liberty School, is mm -hmm. not far from that location, and some other things. It'll be popping here pretty we wanna, soon. Yeah, we're, and the sun's going to be popping today. It's going to be a beautiful day. That's right. so let's check in with Micah here before we head toward 6 o'clock. Another good looking day, that is for sure. High pressure system still back toward our east. And what's going to be happening here is as long as that's around, it's going to keep us dry. But now it's off toward the east instead of over us. So now we're getting the flow out of the south and southeast. And that is what's going to start to see our temperatures rise just a bit. That's the reason why. And not only that, but humidity will be on the rise. Not so much today. Humidity is still relatively low, but it's mainly for the next few days. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s as you walk out the door this morning. Great weather this morning. Again, nice weather by the afternoon. But when does the rain chance lie back in your seven day forecast? I'll have that coming up. If you're about to take off, have a great day. If not, stick with us.